So, in this lecture we shall be moving away slightly from what we have been discussing and we shall be looking at something called switch level modeling using Verilog. Now, this is something which I thought that as a designer someone should know that how we can model some circuits not only at the level of gates and functional blocks, but also at a lower level when our building blocks are transistors and switches. Okay. So, we shall see what are the facilities that are provided by the language Verilog and what kind of modeling you can do or carry out using that. Okay. Let us see. So, so, when you talk about switch level circuit, basically we are talking about a circuit that consists of MOS transistors. Now, for those of you who are familiar with MOS transistors, I means you will be knowing that there are two kinds of MOS transistors, those are the NMOS and PMOS depending on the kind of impurities you put in the source and the drain regions. Right? Okay. Now, the point to note is that as a designer when you are using Verilog to design a digital circuit, it is not very common for you to design a model using transistors, but there may be some very specific cases where a low level module which is sometimes called a leaf level module, you can be using MOS transistors to model them as a hierarchical design. Just I am giving an example. Suppose you want that well Verilog provides gate level primitives and or NAND, NOR, XOR all right, but you want some your own design using MOS transistors to implement some gate. So, you can write a very low level module using MOS transistor let us say to implement an exclusive OR gate and that XOR gate you can use you can instantiate it in higher level designs to create more complex designs. So, it is only under these conditions you can possibly use switch level modeling. Okay. Normally, you do not use switch level models in a real design. Now, as I said Verilog provides some facilities for modeling at the MOS level where the transistors are regarded as a switch. You see in MOS level a transistor is represented like this, this is called the gate and the other two terminals one of them is source, other is drain. This is an example of an NMOS transistor the symbol and PMOS transistor is same where there is a bubble here same kind. Now, we are regarding a transistor as a switch, let us see what is a switch? A switch schematically we represent like this, there are two terminals x and y, they may be connected if I close this switch, they will be not be connected if I open this switch. Here also depending on what voltage I am applying to gate either the source and drain may be conducting they may be connected or they may not be connected. So, you can regard a transistor as a switch that is what is meant by switch level modeling. right? So, earlier we have seen that in Verilog there are four logic values which are supported 0, 1, x and z and earlier we also talked about signal drive strength, drive strengths. Now, here when you are just working with MOS transistors and the basic primitives we shall be seeing, we shall be appreciating that why the signal drive strengths are required in the modeling. And regarding the switches there are two types of switches which are supported one is called ideal, other is called resistive. Now, an ideal switch means when you close a switch there will be 0 resistance and a resistive switch means when you close a switch there will be a low resistance, but not 0 a finite low value of resistance. 
So, if there is a low resistance what will happen is that if I if we apply a signal at one side on the other side the strength of the signal will be reducing a little bit. This is how the concept of signal strength comes in. Okay. When a signal is passing through a resistive switch the strength of the signal decreases. Okay. Fine. Now, the various switch level primitives which are supported by Verilog are as follows. The first are the ideal MOS switches, they are represented by these primitives NMOS, PMOS and CMOS, we shall see them. There are resistive versions of these also, just an R before these names, very similar, but there will be a non-zero resistance here. And these switches are normally assumed to be conducting current in one direction, but there is another kind of a switch which is called bidirectional switch, which is assumed to conduct in both directions. Okay. So, you can have bidirectional switches also, these are denoted by tran, tran, tran if 0, tran if 1, we will see what these are. And similarly, there are resistive versions of these switches with R and B, and there are some keywords to indicate supply voltages, power supply 1 and supply 0, directly you can mention them, and there is something called pull up and pull down, this also we shall see. Now, let us come to NMOS and PMOS switches first. This NMOS and PMOS switches they are declared with the chemo keywords NMOS and PMOS. Now, as I shown you earlier this is a schematic of an NMOS transistor acting as a switch and this is a PMOS transistor. There are two input and output terminals and there is a control, gate is the control, here also it is similar. Now, the way it works is that if the control for an NMOS switch, if the control is at high, if the control is 1, then the gate is conducting. So, if the input is 0, this is input, then the output is 0, this is output. If the input is 1, the output is 1, but if the control is 0, then the switch is off. So, the output will be in the high impedance state, it is not connected to anything. Okay, just ignore these two columns for the time being if the control is either undefined or in the high impedance state, well the Verilog language specifies that if we apply a 0, the output voltage will also be at the low level, ground level. If we apply a 1, the output will be at a high level, because there is no voltage drop. But if you apply I means x and z in the input, then the output will be indeterminate x and z. Similarly, for a PMOS it is just the reverse, if the control is set to 0 then the switch is conducting, if the control is 1 then the switch is off. Okay, we need only this much, this, this part of the table and the way you can instantiate is you write either NMOS or PMOS, well instance name is optional, you can give a name and first the output then the input then the control, this is the order. These switches are sometimes also called pass transistors. Well, there is a CMOS version of CMOS stands for complementary MOS, complementary MOS. So, in a CMOS switch there is an NMOS switch and a PMOS switch which are connected in parallel and there are two control signals N control and P control. So, when you instantiate it, it is output, input, N control and P control. Normally, this N control and P control are complements of each other. Say, if I apply 1 here and 0 here, then it will be conducting. If I apply 0 here and 1 here, both of them are off, so it will be off. This is a better switch as compared to a single transistor switch, because when you use single n type or p type transistor as a switch there is a voltage degradation which happens, but if you use two back to back switches that voltage degradation is avoided. So, I am not going into the details of this here, 
but just remember this that the CMOS switch is a better kind of a switch. Let us take some example designs a CMOS inverter for those of you who have studied MOS level gates will just identify this circuit there is an NMOS transistor there is a PMOS transistor whose gates are connected this is the input and the sources or the drain whatever you call this is the output the other side is connected to power supply VDD and ground this is the symbolic notation. Now, the way it works is very simple if the input x is 0 if it is 0 then the p type switch is on if it is and the n type switch is off if p type is on then VDD will be connected to the output output will be 1 if it is 0 output is 1 and if the input is 1 then the n type will be conducting this switch is on. So, the output will be connected to ground output will be 0. So, it is not gate. So, you can directly specify this netlist in Verilog like this let us call it CMOS not x is the input f is the output. So, input x output f. So, here you are using VDD and ground terminals also that is why you define two variables one you call as VDD another called GND of type supply 1 and supply 0. There is one PMOS transistor let us call it P 1 f and VDD are the two terminals this is f and this is VDD and the gate is x. Similarly, there is another transistor NMOS let us call it N 1 f and ground are the two terminals and the input is x. So, this is the complete description. Similarly, you can have a NAND gate two input NAND gate. So, two input NAND gate there are two n type transistors here and two p type transistors here. For a NAND gate you recall when both the inputs are 1 1 output is 0. So, when both x and y are 1 and 1 both the switches n 1 and n 2 will be conducting on. So, the output will be connected to ground it will be 0, but if, if any one of them is 0. So, either P 1 or P 2 will be conducting. So, there will be a, a path from VDD to the output. So, the output will be 1. So, if any one of the input is 0 output is 1 that is NAND. So, description see you see means I am not here trying to teach you how to design circuits using MOS transistor. So, what I am saying is that given a MOS level circuit how to model it in Verilog. You see this circuit can be modeled in Verilog like this x y and f inputs are x y output of again VDD ground are the two supplies and intermediate there is one line a I declare it as a wire. PMOS that is this P 1 f VDD x f is this this is f this is VDD and this is x for P 2 f VDD y f VDD y now for N 1 this said f a x f a x and for n 2 ground a or a ground whatever order you specify and y a ground y. Okay. Now, this NMOS NAND if you write a simple test bench to see whether it works or not. So, so you can simulate and see that it works really works. So, we have instantiated this CMOS NAND in a test bench like this we called it my NAND 2 in 1 in 2 out the inputs we declare as reg out as wire and defined an integer k. So, why just in order to apply all possible inputs you see this is a two input circuit. So, what we did in this initial block we gave a for loop which runs from k equal to 0 up to 3 k less than 4 0 1 2 3 Th there are two inputs. So, the combinations will be 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 and 1 1 which means 0 1 2 3 I am counting in decimal okay, that k. So, in k I am counting in decimal 0 up to 3 and that value of k I am assigning to the inputs using concatenation operation. Say for example, if k is 3 it means 1 1 in 1 will be 1 in 2 will be 1. So, this will be happening automatically and we are displaying the values of in 1, in 2 and out. So, if you just simulate it we get this result 
0 0 output is 1, 0 1 output is 1, 1 0 1, 1 1 0. This is NAND. Okay. Fine. Let us take another example. This is called pseudo NMOS NOR gate. Okay, but before we explain this, let us tell you about the primitives that are available pull up and pull down. See, you can uh, um, with a signal let us say x, you can either write pull up x or with a signal y say x, you can write pull down x. What does this mean? Pull up x means there is a signal line x, pull up means from here you are connecting a resistance to supply 1, that means positive supply voltage this is called pull up. So, when you say pull up this whole thing will be included by default there. So, the meaning of pull up is that suppose this output you are feeding to the input of some gate let us say and because of some reason this x is in the high impedance state let us say x equal to z. Then because of the pull up this input will still be at 1 because it is connected to the supply with a resistance. So, it will not be in the high impedance the input will not be z. Similarly, pull down means this x is the signal you connect a resistance to ground this means pull down. So, in circuits we often use this kind of pull up and pull down configurations to implement several things. Like here we are showing an alternate way of, def of designing gates, this is, a, this is a NOR gate and this is called pseudo NMOS. Pseudo means here you have a resistance in the pull up and down you have two NMOS transistors. You see why it is NOR? In a NOR gate how does it work? So, if the inputs are 0 0, then only the output is 1 otherwise the output is 0. Okay. Let us say here if the inputs are 0 and 0, both the transistors are off. So, f is not connected to ground. So, f will be connected through this pull up to 1. So, f will be high out 1, but if any one of them is 0 that transistor will be on and f will be connected to ground. Now, see f is connected on one hand to the ground through an on switch on the other side it is connected to a pull up resistance to a supply voltage. So, will the output be ground or high? You see the, the idea is pull up or pull down has a lower signal strength because of that resistance. So, when two such signals are tied together the signal which is stronger it will dominate. Like here on one side you are trying to connect to ground and other side you are connecting to 1, but ground is a stronger signal here. So, ground will dominate because this is ideally 0 resistance. So, f will be 0 right. Okay. So, declaration is very simple x y input f is the output and here we need to declare only ground supplies g n d, there is one NMOS n x, another NMOS n y, f ground x, f ground x, f ground y and there is a pull up at point f, at point f there is a pull up, this is the module description. So, this module in a same way if you do a simulation that same test bench we have just included minor instead of the other one pseudo nor. So, if you simulate it remaining part is same you see the output is coming like this 0 0 is 1 otherwise output is 0 this is nor. So, this one more example let us take here we use a CMOS switch just see this diagram there are two CMOS switches one CMOS switch is here 
another CMOS switch is here and there is a we are implementing a 2 to 1 multiplexer and the two inputs are connected to the CMOS switches and the select line S is connected to the NMOS transistor of one of the switches and to the PMOS transistor of the other switch. Okay. And there is a NOT gate NOT of S is connected to the P transistor of this switch and N transistor of this switch. What does this mean? If S is 0, if S is 0 then this will be 1 not this will be on this will also be on. So, this switch is on, but this switch is off because this is on I 0 will go to the output and if s equal to 1 then this will be on and also this will be on, but this will be off. So, I 1 will go to out. So, representing in Verilog is very simple this input s I 0 I 1 output is out and there is an intermediate line output of this NOT gate I call it s bar. So, I instantiate this NOT s is the input s bar is the output and two CMOS gates I have just instantiated. One I call CMOS A, other I call CMOS B. So, the inputs are out, output the I 0 and control is I means S bar in uh, means N type and S in P type. So, S bar N type and P type and for CMOS B out this is I 1 and here it is S in P type I mean S in n type and S bar in P type S and S bar. So, this again see here there are 3 inputs total right. So, we have uh, written a test bench similarly, but we have applied 8 patterns 0 up to 7 and this k is assigned to select in 0 in 1 like this. So, we have printed the values of cell in 1 this should be in 0 actually in 0 in 1 and out. So, you see if select is 0 then in 0 is getting selected, if select is 1 then in 1 is selected 0 1 0 1 is getting selected right. So, it works as a multiplexer. So, and lastly in this lecture we shall be talking about something called bidirectional switches of course, we will not be giving example just to tell you what it is. See in a normal switch PMOS, NMOS or CMOS well it is assumed that current flows in only one direction, but this is only for the purpose of simulation in a real switch current actually flows in both directions. So, if in a design you need to have a switch where you need current to flow in both directions then you should use something called bidirectional switches which are called TRAN. So, there are three kinds of bidirectional switches TRAN, TRAN if 0 and TRAN if 1. So, the syntax of the TRAN switch is TRAN well instance name as usual is optional means because it is bidirection I call them in out, in out 1, in out 2 the two terminals and this is always conducting, but TRAN if 0 and TRAN if 1 means there is a control signal TRAN if 0 says if the control signal is 0 then it will conduct and TRAN if 1 says if the control signal is 1 if 1 then it will conduct and if it is control is other way round then output will be tri stated this will be off. Okay. This is how the bidirection switches work. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture where we talked about some of the low level MOS switch primitives which also you can use in Verilog modeling, but again I am telling you these are mostly used for simulation purposes most of the synthesis tools will not be supporting this kind of MOS level primitives. So, in the next lecture we shall be looking some more examples on this kind of switch level modelings and a few other things. Thank you.